In this video, I'd like to give you a brief explanation of what income tax is, the type of things that constitute income tax, and then how you would go about computing and calculating income tax. So I just want to say we're talking about income tax in this video for individuals. And, and what I mean by individuals is not just one single person. could be a family. I'm talking about people. And so that means it's not corporations, not corps, not estates. They're all types of different entities. Right, such as a corporation or an estate that, that can be subject to, to income tax, but I just really want to focus on, on people. So when we think about the types of things that constitute income tax, uh, it's, it's good to think of some examples. Obviously, if I just said it's a tax on income, that really wouldn't tell you anything. So probably the number one thing that most people associate is wages. Right, So you work at a job, and, and you get a W-2 at the end of the year. Every week you get your check or every two weeks. Those are wages, right? That's your salary or your hourly income. And so your wages, you know, from your job, right? That's what most people think, oh, I have to pay income tax on that. That's easy for people to understand. But you can also have uh, income tax on, on investment income, right? So you can have things uh, like dividends, for example, that you're going to have to report uh, when you, at least in the U.S., when you file a federal income tax return. You're going to have to pay tax on that income. Then there are also things like, like passive income, which I'm, not, I, I'm actually going to have a different video on. Uh, but basically, if, if you're a limited partner, right? So if you're a limited partner in some business, that would be actually deemed passive income because you're not actively participating in that business. And then there's all kinds of you know, kind of miscellaneous types of income, things that you might not normally think of. And I'll just give you a few examples. If, if you're paying alimony, uh, that that would actually that's taxable income and then if you win some kind of prize or something let's say you went went on a game show you won some kind of prize you won a new card that's actually taxable income as as well so there's a lot of different things that that can fall under the heading of, of taxable income and I should just briefly mention that that I mean not everything is automatically taxed uh, there are some exceptions and for example life insurance proceeds right if someone passes away and uh, the life insurance proceeds are, are typically a, a, something that's exempt from income tax, right? You call it, you actually, when, when something's an exception, you say that it's tax exempt, right? Now, municipal bond interest is exempt uh, from federal income tax returns in the United States. So, and, and we'll have another video on what municipal bonds are, but uh, if, you're, if you're generating interest from muni bonds, uh, then th th you don't have to report that. That, that doesn't end up uh, being taxed at the federal level. However, it could be taxed at the state level, and, and that kind of depends on what state you live in and where your bonds are from. So it's important to note there are th these exceptions, and, and I should probably mention that, at least in the United States, that the federal income tax uh, started in, in 1913 when Woodrow Wilson was president, and we also have, so, so not, not only do we have this federal tax in, in the U.S., but there's also, uh, you can have a, it, and let me just put it up here. So you've got different types different types of taxation. You could be taxed at the federal level on your income, at the state level, and on the local level. And it depends on where you live, right? Your state might not have income tax. Most states do. Uh, and even, you know, your, your city or something might have some kind of income tax. So you can be taxed at, at different levels, and that, that's an important thing to know. So now that we kind of have an idea of the kind of things that, that fall into income tax and, and that there are some, there are some exceptions, there are some things that are tax exempt and have these tax benefits, I just want to sketch out for you just kind of a basic way uh, of understanding how tax is computed, right? And how income tax is computed. And now I'm talking about in the United States and I'm going to talk about at the federal level, right? So your, your federal tax return. It's a lot of state tax. When you have a state income tax return, uh, sometimes it'll it'll be actually be based on numbers from your federal tax return, right? So you figure figure out uh, what your adjusted gross income is, or things I'm about to talk about at the federal level, and then they actually use those numbers for the state. So I'm just going to focus on the the federal tax and how it's really computed. Just give you a brief kind of understanding of how it works. So you start with gross income. Right, and as we mentioned, certain things are exempted; they're tax exempt. They don't end up in gross income, so they've been excluded. Uh, so, gross income is basically everything that could possibly be taxed. Right, so it's like everything but the life insurance proceeds, but those kind of tax exempt items. Now, it's important to note, and th this is kind of something that probably uh, some of you understand already, but it, it is important to note. 
uh, just because you work at a job and you receive cash payments so let's so let's say you say oh I, I do this job sometimes you'll hear people say like oh this is a nice job because it pays cash so I get the tax benefits of that you know it's not well <laughs> Uh, just because you get paid cash for a job uh, that does not mean that it's tax exempt, right? Getting paid cash does not mean that something's tax exempt, right? So you actually are required to report cash income just as if you received a check from your employer and so forth. Now, what people really are doing is thinking that, well, look, it's hard for, you know, how could the IRS possibly know that I received this cash and therefore I don't have to report it in my gross income because, you know, who, you know, I'm just gonna not report it and no one will be the wiser so in any event I mean that is that is a crime that's called tax evasion but I just not to lecture you here but just to let you know that just because you're paid in cash uh, that that may be something in fact that you have to report in gross income now we're gonna have something that that I've titled here deductions for AGI right deductions for AGI and and AGI let me, let me just maybe put that uh, um, up here well AGI we're talking about adjusted gross income and it's really just a subtotal, adjusted gross income, right? Because we're going to be subtracting some things, and then we're going to get a total, and then we're going to subtract some more stuff, right? So basically, we're going to subtract some items that are going to come out, and then that's going to give us this subtotal of a gro adjusted gross income, right? And I've put I've put this these parentheses here around deductions before a gross adjusted gross income or deductions for you can think of it either way it's whatever's more convenient for you um, so I put parentheses around this to indicate that this is subtracted right so these deductions are going to reduce your gross income right so if your gross income's you know fifty thousand and then your deductions for AGI are five thousand your AGI would be forty five thousand all right so the types of things, well, you know what, maybe even I should just explain. So we're going to have deductions before AGI and deductions after AGI, or for or from. So any way you want to think about it, here, I'll just even put in here is before AGI and then after. However, it's easier for you to understand it. Now, you might say, this is silly. Why don't we just lump all these deductions together? And why do we have this subtotal and so forth? Well, that, that actually gets a little more complicated, the reasoning for that. Let me just tell you this. So when you go to have a deduction for AGI, right, you will always get that deduction. However, the deductions after AGI, it's going to get more complicated because what you're going to have, and, and let me change colors here so really make sure you understand this point. So with the deductions from AGI, you're going to have two options, right? So one option is that you could take uh, the itemized, that's what it's called. So you itemize, you, you might have heard about somebody itemizing, do you itemize, or can I itemize this, or this is an itemized deduction. So you can take itemized deductions, or you can take what's called a standard deduction. Now, I know that this is probably sounding a little complicated here. Let me just back up and we'll we'll kind of explain all this, right? So the idea is this. And let's skip ahead to the deductions from AGI for a second. And we'll come back. We'll come back to this and I'll I'll walk you through this. So with the deductions from AGI, they're basically saying, look, what the standard deduction is, it's different every year, but they're basically saying, okay, there are certain items, right? When you say itemized deductions. There are certain items, you know, medical expenses, charitable contributions, these different things, where if you, you could add them all up, right, you could itemize them, add them all up, and come up with a number, right, uh, whatever that, that deduction is, right, and say, okay, that's my deduction from AGI. Or, instead of that, we'll just give you a standard deduction that is just, okay, by standard, we mean it's the same for everybody. So, if you are a single person, and you don't have any dependents, you don't have any children, you don't have, you're just filing taxes for yourself, then we'll give you, let's say it's $7,300, right? We'll just say that that's, that's your standard deduction. You know, if you're single and you don't have any dependents or so forth, you're not like the head of household, you know, you're just, you're single living by yourself, we'll give you a deduction, of, let's say $7,300. Or you could add up all these different items, your miscellaneous expenses, your, uh, your medical expenses, your charity uh, contributions, all that stuff. You can just add all those itemized things up and do that. So 
if you say, well, you know what, I look at my itemized items, and let's say they're only add up to 3,000, but I could take a standard deduction of 7,300, you'll say, okay, I'm going to choose a standard deduction, in which case, those itemized deductions that were 3,000, let's say you donated to charity, you don't get any benefit from that because it was actually more advantageous for you to take the standard deduction because it was higher, right? So if, if the itemized, and this is a really important point, so let's say this was 3,000 and your standard deduction was 7,300. You would take the standard deduction. You would say, I'm just going to take that, in which case all those little things that were itemized basically give you no benefit because you're just taking the standard deduction. So in that case, certain deductions might not actually be a deduction because you just take the standard deduction. However, deductions for AGI, they're taken out before we get to this point here, right, where we're having to make a decision. So it's basically saying if you have a deduction for AGI, you will get that deduction whether or not you itemize. Whether you take the standard deduction or itemize, Certain items, the government has said, you know what, we want to make sure you get that deduction, so we compute it before AGI, and you will, you will get it, regardless of whether you itemize, right? So um, let, let me just maybe even, this is an important point, so not affected by decision to itemize. Now, let, let me give you an example. I mean, there are tons of things that are deductions. Uh, you know, for AGI, I, I just want to give you an example. For example, student loan interest. And, and as of 2014, I believe student loan interest, you can deduct up to $2,500. Right now, whether or not you itemize doesn't matter because student loan interest is not an itemizable deduction, right? So whether you itemize or take the standard deduction doesn't matter. If you have up to 20, whatever you have up to $2,500 of student loan interest, that gets deducted here, and then now you've got the subtotal of AGI, and then you go and say, okay, now my deductions after AGI, my, how much money did I donate to charity? You add that all up, and you say, what are your itemized deductions? And then if your itemized deductions are higher than the standard that you would get, then you itemize. You list all those things out, and you take the, the higher of the two of these, right? So. We'll have another video where we'll, we'll get into that in a little more depth. And then now exemptions, when we think about it, exemptions, exemptions are really, uh, you get a deduction for yourself. You know, assume, assuming now, again, if you're being claimed by somebody else, if let's say you're a student and your parents are claiming you, this can get a little more complicated. But I'm just going to say in general, you're an adult, you support yourself, then you get a deduction for yourself. Um, and then also, if you're if you're married and you're filing joint, you, know, you get uh, your spouse, right? The two of you, and then any dependents. Now, dependents, you normally think, okay, well, I have children; those are dependents. People who depend on you, uh, and then they have different rules of what technically is a dependent. Do they receive more than fifty percent of their support from you and stuff? And I'm not going to go through all the rules of of de determining whether someone's a dependent, but basically, somebody depends on you for their living, right? So maybe you have. Um, an elderly parent who is living with you and you provide all their financial support, that's a dependent, right? So you'd say, okay, I got myself, my spouse, and then my elderly parent, so there's three of us, right? And you're going to get a, a, basically a deduction here. And again, this isn't, uh, this doesn't affect your, you know, whether you're itemized or not or anything like this. This comes after. Uh, you, it's going to come out of AGI. You're going to get a deduction, right? And it might be like $3,400 per per exemption or something like that, so you multiply it by three. It depends on the year. Every year it's different. So now that you've deducted all those things, you get to taxable income. Now, I, I've kind of simplified things a bit here, so not make it more complicated, but even when we get to taxable income, we're really not done because, first of all, we have to determine what our tax rate is, which is, is not as easy as you might think. And then second of all, even once we determine the rate, uh, we've got this thing called tax credits, right? So, so let me just, and, and again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a separate video on like tax credits and stuff. So don't, don't, don't worry if you're not grabbing it all yet. Just, just kind of try and take it in. So once we have this taxable income, now we're going to multiply it. And, and maybe I'll put, put a little multiplication sign here in white. So we're going to multiply it. I apologize, there's so much writing here and everything, it might be hard for you to understand. We're going to multiply it by the tax rate. 
Now, what makes this a little bit difficult to, to kind of comprehend for some people is you might think, right? You might be somebody who's thinking, hey, if I make a certain amount of money, let's say my taxable income is $40,000, right? So let's say it's $40,000. Then I just go look in the table and say, okay, I made $40,000. My tax rate is, I, I don't know, let's just say it was uh, 20% or 20, 25%, let's just say. I'm, I, that's not probably, I'm just talking, just giving you an example. So let's say it was 25%. So at least the way it works in the U.S. is what we have we have called progressive tax rates, right? And and they start, uh, you, you know, around typically around like ten percent. Now this just changes, right? Every depending on what what year you're viewing this video in, and you should not take this as the lowest tax rate, but it can be as low as like ten uh, percent. It could get up by like you know thirty nine percent. I mean, back at, at, you know, during World War II and stuff, we had tax rates, the highest bracket. See, these are called brackets, different brackets. So the highest brackets, we have brackets that were up like 70, 80% on like, so it's basically somebody's making like, you know, $30 million a year or something being the highest bracket. And they, but they, they've come down. The highest tax brackets have come down a lot since that time. In any event, you, you have kind of, you know, the, the first, you know, ten twenty thousand $20,000 of taxable income you have, You'll be in one of those lower brackets, and then as you make more and more money, you'll get to a higher bracket. But here's the thing. You don't just say, okay, what bracket am I in, and then just apply that 25% uh, to the whole 40000 right? So it might work. It Well, depending on what the tax rate is and the year in which you view this, it might say, like, okay, the first 10000 of that 40000 is taxed at 10%, right? And then the next... 10,000 is taxed at 15% and so forth. So it's like it's like it's 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 stepping up gradually as you make more money, right? It's not like one blanket tax rate. So in any event, you can go and and you don't just pick a rate and then just multiply it by your taxable income. There are tables you can look at the IRS has um, and or you could just, you know, calculate it kind of for each okay, the first 10,000 was this and so forth. In any event, once you've done this, now you've come up with with your tax due. But, but even that is kind of a misnomer, and I'm, I'm going to explain that in a minute. So now you say tax due, and you say, okay, finally, we are done. But but unfortunately, not really. Uh, but it's a good thing because, you know, the government has come up with these things called credits, right, tax credits. So and I'm just going to put, we'll put less any tax credits. And tax credits reduce your tax dollar for dollar. So I'm just going to put that reduce tax dollar for dollar. Now you might say, hey, what? how is that different than a deduction? And we'll have a different video on that. We'll I'll work through the numbers and stuff. But basically, whereas a deduction, you're just reducing it. And then let's say you let's say you have a deduction of $100 and your tax rate was 25%. Now you're really reducing $25 of tax, right? Because you've reduced, deductions reduce taxable income. They don't reduce tax. And again, like I said, I'll get into a different video where I'll talk more about it. But the tax credits are reducing the tax due dollar for dollar. So if you owe $800 in tax and you have $500 in credits, now you only owe $300 in tax, right? So you're not, deductions reduce taxable income, tax credits reduce the actual tax due dollar for dollar. So there's different things the government has wanted to provide incentives for, like you have like education tax credits and stuff like that, trying to encourage people to go back to school, help them out and to basically reduce their, their tax dollar for dollar when they do that. Now, so this is kind of the general overview, and we'll get into some of the specifics and talk more about credits and so forth in other videos. But it's important to note that, at least when we're talking about the, the federal income tax return in the U.S., so federal is due April 15th, right? And again, like I said, a lot of the state returns, you, you'll base, like, it'll say, like, okay, what was your AGI from your federal tax return? And the way, if you're going to compute, so you can compute their tax yourself, right? You could do it yourself, and you could use uh, software to help you with that, or you just use paper and pencil, right? Get the forms from your library, or you could use what's called a preparer, right? You can hire an accountant uh, to prepare, or it doesn't even necessarily have to be a CPA or something, but you can hire somebody to prepare your taxes for you. And what you would do as an input to doing all this, what you want to do is, um, you know, and at the end of January, you get a W-2 from your employer. And then you also get like 1099s that have to do with any interest uh, and so forth. So you get these these tax forms, and then they allow you uh, to prepare 
your, your own taxes or you give them to your preparer and, and they do them for you. 